and come in just behind the eye of the hook, secure that six out thread, wrap rearward over the tag, take that thread back to the bend of the hook. Now this is a smaller wooly bugger, but I still want to put just a little bit of point out one five lead on the shank. I'm going to take about 12 side by side wraps approximately in the middle of the shank and then very simply break off the excess in the front and the back take that thread wrap forward over the top of it just to secure it and lock it down and then return that thread back to the bend of the hook oh there are tons of different color combinations uh, that you can use for will the buggers it's september right now and so one of my favorite fall combos is yellow and root beer so I'm going to bring in the marabou, which in this case is yellow. And I want this tail to just be about as long as the hook shank. I'm going to transfer hands with that. Hold that in place. I'm going to take a loose wrap over that fuzz. And then just wrap forward over the excess. Return that thread right back to the bend of the hook. You notice I tend to stick the nose of the bobbin right up in the area where I'm tying. Makes it easier to work. Also locks things down a little bit more firmly. Next thing I'm going to bring in is what I use for ribbing. I prefer to actually use just some leftover tibet. So this is 4X. And it's just mono. It doesn't matter. Mono, fluoro. It's a little easier to work with. It's easier to tie down. And it's a little more durable than wire. So I'm going to catch the tip of that. Lock it down with a couple wraps. And just let it hang off to the back. The next thing I'm going to bring in is my hackle. Now in this situation I'm using a grizzly hackle. And all that means is... That there are black bars that run through it so this is a yellow grizzly hackle i want to make sure when i tie this in that there is still that concave or cupped part to the feather and well, i want to make sure that that's laying toward the back and is facing down for the way that i'm going to start it uh, i want to make sure also that the fibers on this hackle are longer toward the back because i want them longer when i reach the front of the hook i've trimmed off just a little bit of the stem here and left just a little piece to catch this by so my concave side is facing down there. I'm going to catch this just by that little stray tip, wrap back a little bit over the stem, and let that hang down to the side. The last thing I'm going to bring in is my chenille. Now, this is crystal chenille. Uh, you can get it, obviously, in kind of the plain mottled colors. This is a crystal material that's woven in. The gist of chenille is simple, though. It's all a couple strands of thread, and they're twisted, and they weave in whatever fibers they choose. So... I've plucked out some of the fibers to expose that thread body, and that makes it really easy to tie that in. So I'm going to catch that thread with a wrap or two, and then I'm going to take that thread forward all the way to the eye of the hook and leave about an eighth of an inch gap there. Now I'm a huge durability stickler, and so I'm going to put a little drop of my favorite fly tying glue, Zappy Gap, just right there on the tying point. That's just going to help to lock everything down. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the order of materials here. We're going to bring this chenille forward first. And all we're trying to accomplish is to lay down side-by-side -side wraps that cover the shank of the hook. So this chenille has a little bit of a longer fiber to it. So if you need to, you can brush it back. Or you can continue to wrap it forward. It's not going to be a huge deal breaker in the end result. So we're going to wrap that right up to the, to the thread where it's waiting for us. And when we get to that point, we're going to hold the strand of chenille vertical. So I'm going to hold this vertical. I'm going to take one wrap behind it, snug that down, pull that back with my fibers. And once again, there goes the nose of my bobbin. It's stuck right in there. Take two or three quick wraps around the hook shank and snip off the excess. So now we're going to grab hold of our hackle. And like we said, we focused on having the concave side of that down into the back, and we left that little part of the stem bare. That's going to help us get a clean start to our wrap. When I lay these wraps down, I want to leave little spaces, kind of like uh, candy cane stripes, in between each of the wraps. So I'm going to start that and just continue to bring it around, leaving a little space in between. When I get up here to where the thread's at, I'm actually going to finish off with two wraps of the hackle in the same spot. The other thing that I guess I can talk about as I'm doing this is 
Um, with these larger hackles, I tend not to use the hackle pliers. I like to just grab them with my hands, and that seems to work well for me. Nothing wrong with grabbing a hold of them with a pair of hackle pliers if you need to. So I've got my two wraps of the hackle there, right in the front. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take that thread, I'm going to drop it behind it, snug it down, stick the nose of the bobbin in there, throw down two or three nice tight wraps, and snip off the step part of the stem. All right, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to bring this ribbing through. And all that really matters as I do this is that I wiggle it side to side. And the purpose of that is that it works its way through the hackle fibers. So it's still going to trap some of them, but it's going to let most of them run free. And that's what we're after. So I wiggle that back and forth, side to side, until I get all the way up to where my thread's right waiting. And I actually like to take it, take one wrap around the hook shank, catch it once behind it, come in once again with my fingers, pull that material back, throw down a few snug wraps, and snip that off. So at this point we have two options and there's a couple uh, videos above that can help you out here. You're either gonna throw in a couple half hitches and we're gonna glue the head anyways, or you can come in and you could whip finish it with a tool or you could whip finish it by hand. So I'm gonna throw in a couple more thread wraps just to make sure everything's sound and secure and then I'm gonna whip finish it by hand. Snug that down, snip off the excess. And then for the sake of durability, I'm gonna put just a little drop of zappy gap on my bodkin there. Loosen up that vise so I can rotate it. I'm just gonna touch that to the head as I rotate it around. <laughs> 